Please welcome to the H&M Trucking Podcast, Alan Adler. He's the Detroit Bureau Chief for FreightWaves.com, journalist and also a podcaster himself. You can check out his podcast, Truck Tech. It's over at the Freight Waves YouTube. Alan, thank you so much for being here today. Thanks. Let me fix that title real quick because I left Detroit and we moved to West Michigan. So now I call myself Midwest Bureau Chief, for okay. whatever that's worth. Still doing yeah. the same work, though. <laughs> great, great. Well, I appreciate you correcting me there. Uh, love the work that you guys do over at Freight Waves. It's actually the uh, the entire reason that I, I had you on here today. I was reading your uh, article entitled Electric Trucks Should Shake Off Setbacks in 2024 uh, from January 23rd. And uh, we've been talking a little bit about electric trucks here um, for the last week or so on the H&M Trucking Podcast. And I'll be honest with you, Alan, uh, the the drivers that I've had on so far, they aren't too into it. Uh, it's not something that they are uh, really that excited about or something that they believe in at this point. Uh, what's your experience in talking with uh, drivers and other folks from the transportation industry? What's the What's the temperature on electric trucking innovation right now? Well, Marcus, I think there's two things at play. One is that, you know, change is really hard. Nobody likes it. Uh, certainly the fleets are, are going to struggle uh, even with incentives in terms of the cost differences in, in purchasing electric trucks for their fleets. Um, I would say this. I think that the the feeling on the part of trucking that who needs it, all this stuff doesn't go anywhere. I heard this last night. I, I do a segment on SXM on Road Dog Trucking with Grace Sharkey, um, who's a colleague at Freightways, um, has that show. And had a driver call us last night and say, you know, we hear about this stuff all the time. And, and you know, this is great. and That's great. But he wasn't a believer. And I think the only people, truthfully, who, who really like electric trucks at this point are those who have driven them. Because they are a lot more comfortable. They have terrific uh, uh, torque and pickup. Uh, they're different, obviously, from you know somebody who runs through 18 gears or 14 gears of a of a truck. But but really, um, I think it is an exper experiential thing. I think the people who experience them like them, but I think that's a very slow adoption process. Absolutely, I, I can relate it a little bit to my career. You know, never having been behind the wheel of a truck, I did start my broadcasting career in terrestrial radio. And uh, we used to laugh at podcasts all the time uh, 10 years ago. Uh, never thought that the technology would catch on. Never thought it would be something that uh, everybody wanted a piece of. And here we are in 2023. Everybody and their dog has a podcast. And uh, it's one of the best ways that we all share information. So that's just kind of the nature of innovation, I think. And um, it'll be interesting to see how many of those uh, true blue, you know, old school truck drivers get behind the wheel of an electric truck here uh, as as we move into the future and, and try to, I guess, shed that stigma a little bit, because it's always been interesting to me that, you know, this to me is is cool new technology. But at the same time, I can understand why a lot of drivers uh, are not buying in yet. Obviously, infrastructure is a big part of that. And you talk a lot about that in the article that I was referencing earlier there's a couple things, a couple quotes here just real shortly that I wanted to to read is it uh, major but inadequate strides for the infrastructure in, in 2023. Can you talk me through the positives and the negatives that the heavy duty electric truck innovation uh, went through in 2023? Yeah, I, I'll try. I think I think when it comes to heavy duty electric trucks, you know, they're still ex extremely limited in terms of the range they can give you on a single charge. So Right now, uh, you've got some drayage adoption, you know, in the ports in Los Angeles and uh, Long Beach, of course, and up up in Oakland to a lesser extent. But I think what's really going on here is that, you know, until we get uh, trucks that are able to take a, a higher rate of charge and, uh, you know, like the Tesla Semi, it, it, it can charge at 750 kilowatt hours, um, you know, you're really going to be dealing with at least the hangover effect of range anxiety. You know, am I going to get stranded out here? What, you know, someone going to come rescue me, that sort of thing. So you've got, you've got that at play. Um, I think, you know, one of the things that really you have to look at for electric trucks is use case. And, and the place we're seeing the most adoption right now is in a uh, sort of return to base, uh, medium duty, call it class three to five, three to six uh, sort of range where you know you you have a prescribed route or a pretty similar route every day you know what your needs are and you can you can charge these up uh, back at the base when you go home at night they can charge overnight they don't even need DC charging they can charge 
an alternating current, what's called level two. And, uh, you know, so, so that works. And that's a workable case where you are already getting closer to parity in terms of total cost of ownership. Heavy duty is a much different animal. Um, I'll just give you Snyder, for example. They've got 92 uh, uh, class eight freight under Cascadia's right now. That sounds like a big number until you consider that it's about 1% of their total. So it's a slow curve, as I said in my in the first, first comment. Infrastructure is coming, and it's coming from some interesting places. Um, we've got a lot of startups that are well-funded uh, that, that, you know, uh, either through venture capital or through uh, real estate has been a big investor in this uh, area. And, uh, you know, they want to, uh, you know, get into the charging space. They see it not only for trucks and, and that sort of thing, but they see the needs at properties they own elsewhere, warehouses and so forth. So I think that, you know, we're going to see a fair amount of money coming into that area. You also have a lot of government money coming in for infrastructure. It's still not enough. I mean, it's not anywhere near what we're going to need. I mean, I think it's the California Energy Commission says 157,000 uh, trucking charging stations are going to be needed by 2030. We're not close, Marcus. Yeah, I, not close is, is one way to characterize it for sure.